Good evening, and welcome to St. Thomas the Apostles Catholic Church. As you can tell, Father Steve has not grown a ponytail. Okay. Father Steve asked if I would do confessions and mass this evening, and I said I would gladly do that. So, um, so we get, I get to celebrate with you this evening on this fourth weekend of Advent. And so we invite you to join with us in active participation and realize as we, uh, we actually almost have a whole fourth week of Advent. That doesn't happen very often. Some days we'll have the fourth, fourth Sunday, and the next day is Christmas. And so, we, so I always feel sad for the fourth Sunday of Advent, because it doesn't get this, the readings are so beautiful and powerful throughout the whole week. So this week we get, we get, more, we get four days, so that's kind of special. Um, with that, I invite you to stand as we, together we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and our preparation for Christmas. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, the prophet, prophet Isaiah proclaimed, Drop down dew from above, you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a Savior. We light another lamp against the darkness as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Prince of Peace, the King of Israel, the light of Christ who is coming soon. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us as we light all four candles of our wreath, an outward sign of our inward preparation to be reborn in Christ. May the light of this wreath reflect the splendor of Christ and inspire us to follow him anew, who is Lord forever and ever. The Lord God, Moved by the light of your Christ, we acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament. Strengthen us in holiness 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us be seated for the readings. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build a house, build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
kindness is established forever in heaven. You have confirmed your faithfulness forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Gospel is probably one of my favorites. One of my favorites because of three phrases that are in there that I have found myself going back to many, many times throughout my years of faith. First, when we hear, do not be afraid. We hear that throughout the Gospel of Luke many times and several of the other ones. But it's that sense of when everything going like, what? What? Who, who are you? How did you get in? What? <sighs> do not be afraid. There's times when either maybe in seminary or before or um, an accident I had and wasn't certain what was going to happen, I needed to hear that. Do not be afraid. Then we hear the other thing, that, because as human beings we go, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, and, and we all of a sudden we hear the second the second phrase that's on. Nothing will be impossible for God. Really? Now, I have to admit that when I think about that, that does, that does calm my fears. Okay? Like, okay, okay. Granted, the, the little voice is going, yeah, but... And I have to say, nothing? It's impossible for God. And so then we have the great example of Elizabeth having John the Baptist, we know that, and that she's six months along. Whoa! You know, and, and you can imagine Mary's going, Elizabeth? Pregnant? Really? Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe nothing is impossible with God. Oh, I'm supposed to be standing in one place, aren't I? Oops. Okay. <laughs> You know that I, if, I, if, if, if I can't move, I can't talk. So. So. But what we have is, is, is Elizabeth, and Mary goes, maybe nothing is impossible with God. Because, you know, we hear that she, she who is called barren is with child six months. And then we know that Mary is so excited about that that she goes and ends up seeing Elizabeth and, and stays there for about three months. So, what's interesting is if you do the math, if Elizabeth is in her sixth month and Mary goes to be with her for three months, then it's real possible that Mary could have been there for the birth of John the Baptist. And all the strings begin to come together. 
all the things that we hear from the first reading and the phrase and from that, from David, and he says, your, your house will be there and he will be the son of God. I, he will be like a son to me and I will be a father to him. We hear all that. And then we just go we're like, oh. So the question becomes for us, have we been able to move to the third statement? Where we go, let it be done according to your will. How many times have we probably had to say that or think it or something like that when we finally have surrendered ourselves to where we were supposed to do or what we're supposed to do? But we may not use those quite those words. We may say, okay, okay, I'll do it, dang it. But it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. We take a breath. Let it be done according to your will. That's a great place. And I don't think it happens just once in our lifetime. <laughs> I think it happens and can happen almost daily. Where we just kind of say, First of all, are you sure about this? Yeah, but. And then finally saying, let it be done according to your will. So on your Advent journey, how close are you to saying that about our story of faith that we celebrate this Advent? with all the things of pandemic and the, the vaccine coming and elections and everything else, can we, can we let it be done according to your will and let the yeah but die on the vine? Let us stand, and together let us profess what we believe as together we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring the needs of all to the rock of our salvation, whose steadfast love endures forever. For the church, may our hearts be an authentic dwelling place for God, and thus enable us to bring God's presence to all we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples of earth, one kingdom of God. May the homeless and destitute those abandoned by society, be surrounded by the Holy Spirit and brought to places of loving care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the upcoming diocesan synod on family, may we continue to grow as disciples of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are isolated and alone, particularly those who are homebound or in nursing homes. 
May Christ fill their emptiness and open our hearts to reach out to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents awaiting the birth of a child, like the Virgin Mary, may they joyfully ponder God's power and goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here and in our homes, in facing life's obstacles, may we place our trust in God, for whom nothing is impossible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Mary Roberts, Vern Boyer, Carrie Wynn, Audrey Parks, Don Brokop, Reed Hagen, Pat Byorth, Peggy Newcomb, Mick Johnson, Jack Payden, Paul Lacey, and Joyce Viviano. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joyce McGinley, may the coming of Christ open for them the eternal joy and peace of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Harry and Evelyn Funk, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, whom the heavens cannot contain, you have chosen as your tabernacle the womb of Mary, the Virgin of Nazareth. Overshadow us with your power, form us as your daughters and sons, and knit us together as your holy people, according to your word. For you, nothing is impossible, and so we offer you our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Our preparation song is Holy is His Name. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and we come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and we come our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, and John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and the archangels and with the thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end together we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time that Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It is now at our Savior's command and form to divine teaching that we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our faults, our failings, our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Servant Song. Body of Christ.
Let us be seated for a moment of silent prayer. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draw ever nearer, so may we press forward all more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And I think we have some announcements. Happy fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, tomorrow is delivery day, so thank you to all who have been a part of this very important Christmas food basket ministry. Our featured parishioner in our bulletin this week is one of our 10.30 a.m. ushers, Linda Clausen. Please get to know Linda a bit better by reading page five of our bulletin on paper or online this weekend. There are still books and calendars on the table, so please take one, of, take one of each for your family. This Friday is Christmas, and we will offer three Masses for those able to attend in person or online. Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., and Christmas Day at 9 a.m. Please note the following guidelines for those hoping to attend in person. First, masks continue to be required. Ushers will seat everyone, so you don't come in and seat yourselves. The ushers will help us with that process. So um, be mindful of identifying an usher and letting them seat you. Uh, so they, and then we do that for the purpose of making the best use of our space. And families are encouraged to arrive at the same time in order to be seated together. I guess if you didn't want to, you could go separately, but it's Christmas. We need to be together. Um, sorry, that just struck me as funny. Um, <laughs> Once capacity is reached uh, in the church, then overflow seating will continue in the community center downstairs. Uh, the 5 p.m. Mass is always the most heavily attended, so you might want to consider one of the other Mass times this year. We also encourage anyone with compromised health or other concerns to join us online. Merry Christmas. I'm glad I was able to say yes to Father Steve, who invited me to celebrate with you this evening. And I was able to say yes because the Green Bay game doesn't start till 6.15. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon us all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing, Alleluia, hurry, the Lord is near. Mm -hmm. 